Hello and welcome everybody to the Join Dota League season number 4, a Hefla TV presentation of it. It's going to be ABC versus Arcanis Gaming. ABC of course, they used to be Chinese Revenge, but now as Chinese he's playing for Mineski, at least for the time being. They can't really be Chinese Revenge all of a sudden anymore, so they changed their name. ABC, this, it should be Apple, Banana, Cucumber, I think. Unless I'm completely mistaken with my guess here, but it should be that. And if you're wondering why the hell we're on Hitbox instead of the usual... Twitch Hefla TV, it's just because, well, we have to test out Hitbox a little bit. It's just because we're going to have a tournament, which we're going to have to cast in Hitbox, just because it's the sponsor and whatnot. So we're going to just testing things out at the moment, so feel free to leave some feedback in the chat or whatnot. The stream quality, something like that. If the picture is just all smooth and whatnot. On my end, so far, no frames drop, no nothing, so all should be good. But, we're already in the draft, like and together with the Razer banned out by ABC, whereas Pro Master and Dev Prophet banned by Arcanis, so just no support bans, cores all around. ABC did start with a Skyrath Mage, just all in all, a solid enough support, I mean, you can't go much wrong with that hero to be fair. But Arcanis Gaming, what will they counter this with? I do know that yesterday they even first picked an Ancient Apparition against the Execration or Interactive Philippines. So will they go for it again or will they pick up an IO for example? I mean, IO is an extremely strong hero if put into the right hands. But that's the biggest deal. Do they have the right hands to put the IO in? So far though, going for a Vengeful Spirit instead. As, what will the second one be? Ogre Magi, maybe? Ogre Vengeful, definitely a really strong opening. I think they started one of the two games yesterday with that same opening as well. So I would kind of expect it to come out, really. Maybe, maybe not. Especially since if they have the Bloodlust plus the Vengeance Aura, really any core they pick later on in the draft, they're just going to be boosted to Oblivion. <laughs> I mean, one core boosted by Vengeance Aura and Bloodlust. It's like having one additional, just tier 3 item all of a sudden. But, they are taking their time with the second pick now. I guess maybe they're alternating between like Ogre, maybe picking up some cores. Or maybe even going for Earthshaker for example. If they don't, ABC might easily go for an Earthshaker themselves, a Skyraf Earthshaker for example. Or ABC could also go for like Centaur, Skyraf combinations, really anything to be honest. This early in the draft, it's so hard to dictate who's gonna pick what, it's just completely down to team preference. There's no way about it. And Tidehunter will be the pick for Arcanist. They thought long and hard, but they just outweighed the Tidehunter's usefulness. I mean, double ravage if you get the Refresher Orb, but these days most Tidehunters get the Refresher Orb. Some sooner, some later, but usually it's like 35 minutes in, you already have it, 40 at the latest. As ABC, yes, they did go for the center. Can't say it's overly surprising as wait a second. I just got a new computer a few days ago, so I'm gonna Oh is it Uni Speech volu volume? I don't even know what the freaking vo what volume does the draft. Well maybe. Hopefully it's gonna be zeroed out now. I mean sorry Tarz like oh ten seconds remaining. Uh. And oh man we B C D S, you called it, man. It was the Tide Hunter. Good for you, man. Good for you. But Viper, the ban now from A B C. Just taking out some more cores. Anti Mage banned out by Arcanist themselves, so I would expect maybe A B C to ban out the Medusa now. Arcanist, of course, they're gonna have the first pick in the second phase here, and banning out an Anti Mage almost gives a clear sign that hey, we're gonna pick Medusa. Maybe Arcanist are gonna also pick or ban rather the Nyx Assassin. Keeper of Light is also used to try to counteract the Medusa a little bit, but you may just not be able to make him move. If you go for like multiple 4 staff, yes, you mana leak, double 4 staff, and suddenly Medusa doesn't have any mana almost. Whether it's worth it to actually go for those items and just go for that kind of strategy, I, I don't know. Arcanis, of course, it's not like they have to go for Medusa, but ABC, I, I think after the anti mage ban, they're definitely considering it. And. If Arcanis, if they are indeed going for Medusa, I I have to say I would have loved to see them ban out the anti as the fourth one. Because if they go for Medusa now, or if ABC ban it out, it, it was just a little bit too obvious in that case. They could have easily banned it out as the fourth one and then picked it up, but it's not going to get banned, so all is fine still. ABC banning out the Shakiro instead. Sh Shakiro, whether it be core or support, pretty damn strong. Liquid Fire, so hard to deal with. 
you you really can't even defend against that because your towers will just keep on falling. It's free harass, even as a support, you don't have to re just get too much mana back. No Arcanis? They did ban out the Medusa themselves as well, so... The Anti-Mage wasn't just a targeted ban in a sense that they themselves wouldn't want to face the Anti-Mage. Or that they would have some heroes just exceptionally weak against Anti-Mage. They were just like, yeah, that, that hero is just annoying, let's ban it out. But Arcanis now, what will they go for? I still vote for Ogre, man. You can't go wrong with Ogre. A tanky hero, you can go super aggressive. And you're just gonna be fine with that. You can dive towers whatnot with the 6 base armor that the Ogre starts with. We'll see if they actually want to follow up with that though. Now, what are the other options? I mean, they already have one support as well as the offlaner. I guess you can run a Vengeful in a tri lane as well if you really want to. Just as a core that, that is. But they still need a mid laner, of course. Something that would naturally build BKB, for example, definitely wouldn't hurt I me mean, being up against the Centaur and Skyrath already. And so far, went for a Sand King, some more initiation of their own. Maybe Tidehunter will even go for a mech, although I really love Tidehunter trashing the Blink Dagger. Blink Ravage is just 80% better than Ravage without Blink. Because you, you can get your positioning so damn perfect, catch everybody on the enemy team. But Sand King. Definitely good hero, I mean, the more initiation heroes you have, the better, because you don't rely on that one hero, you don't put so much pressure on that certain somebody. As ABC. Faceless, Faceless void. void to pick up for them. Faceless Void, Skyrim Mage, of course, the synergy is definitely there. And are they going to go for something like Ancient Apparition now as well, or Invoker? Which Doctor I would like, like more than Ancient Apparition in a sense, just because you're going to have some stun. Sky of Ancient, Ancient Apparition, they might have the slows from the Ice Vortex and the Concussive Shot. But that might not be it. Or that not, might, might not be enough, that is. So Arcanis now, what will they go for? How do they react? Do they go for... Well, I guess they already have the Vengeful to swap people out of the Chronosphere, so that's definitely a nice side for them. But... Do they go for... Example... An Invoker for themselves? They have plenty of setup for the Sun Strikes and Chaos Meteors even as well. I definitely wouldn't mind a Exhort Invoker coming out from Arcanist towards the mid lane. At least not for the time being. What? Are, I guess something like a Puck just being really elusive. Maybe even an Ember Spirit for that matter to be honest. Not too sure if Arcanist even played the Ember at all. I have to say I haven't casted them all that much in the recent past. But a Dragon Knight, not a bad pick. I was talking about natural PKB carriers. Beforehand, Dragon Knight definitely likes to uh, just build PKB more often than not. Plus, of course, even without that, having the Dragon Blood, having the bonus armor and the health regeneration, Faceless Void alone might not be enough. And even if the Skyrim Mage comes to assist Dragon Knight, he has a pretty high health pool, so might even be able to survive that. So I don't mind that pick at all. Also, gonna give them some form of push. The only downside is that Dragon Knight without the ultimate isn't all that scary. So they're gonna have to make good use of the Elder Dragon form to get enough out of the usage almost every single time. Just either win a fight, get some buildings, get the objectives and push out the lane, something like that. But oh, we ABC going for a Timber Soul. Well, Arcanists do have three melee heroes, which all are strength. So Whirling Death is gonna be so excellent against them, reduce their primary strat by 15%. And well, it's also health for strength heroes. So really nice pick the Timber Soul there. Arcanist though they have plenty of lockdown to try to deal with the timber saw. So that's kind of a downside, but the magic burst now is real for ABC. The one thing is that is, is this timber saw mid lane against Dragonite? I guess this might be and although in the mid lane you don't have too much to timber chain too. Still just maxing out the whirling death maybe even in that matchup. Dragon Knight's not gonna have a happy time. Arcanist, I guess they could still swap it around. Just send the Dragon Knight into the safe lane with the tri lane instead. Have the Vengeful Spirit maybe even roam around completely. Something along those lines and just Sand King stack and farm, stack and farm. Just to make sure that you're not leeching too much XP away from the Dragon Knight. But that would mean that probably Faces White will have a slightly better time on lane as well if, it, if he's the off lane. Although at the moment I'd expect Centaur to go off lane, Faces White safe lane and the Team Verso to be in the mid lane. You can go Faces Void offlane and Centaur safe lane as well. It really comes down to how you as a team prioritize the Blink Dagger on Centaur. Some people send the Centaur safe lane and for example the Brewmaster as well. 
work rather similar just for mid game dominance get the early blink guaranteed early blink that is so we'll see about abc's laning they still need one support of course i i will still vote for witch doctor man your heals are always going to be nice paralyzing cask against melee heroes pretty excellent if you ask me plus of course the death ward into the chronosphere if not that though ancient apparition might still be one earthshaker did get banned morphling taken out by abc themselves Morphling also would have been a hero that would have been rather hard to shut down. Just because you're gonna have to replicate, but oh, Arcanist, they went for another melee hero, a Doombringer. Four melees, four strengths. I guess Dragon Knight can transition into a ranged hero at times with the Elder Dragon form, but that's not all that reliable in Arcanist. They might have gone too greedy. I mean, Doombringer, yes, excellent to shut down Timber Soul, Faces Void Wall, whoever really with the ultimate. But, oh god, ABC, if they even get just off the good start slightly, they might be able to just kill everybody just with Timbers already. I mean, Chronosphere into Chakra, into Mystic Flare. Not too many heroes can survive that. I mean, without, with only the Mystic Flare, Dragon Knight might have been tanky enough. Maybe even Tide Hunter for that matter, or the Doom, depending on what items they go for. But this at the moment, Doombringer, wow. That, that's some ballsy pick, I have to say. I, I did not expect this to come out here. We'll see how well Arcanis can run it. I, I have highly doubt that it's a lineup that they've ran before. Maybe they have, maybe they haven't. Like I said, I haven't casted too much of them se them recently. I cast them mostly in Joint of the League Season 2, but that was a couple of months ago already at the very least. And I think not too many players are the same that were there at the, at the time. But, what will the 5th pick be? They still need the support. I still vote for like Witch Doctor or Ancient Apparition, maybe. Well, I guess they could still go for some melee supports as well. Although, the best ones, Sanking and Earthshaker, have already been occupied. Shakira, of course, is well banned out. Maybe Crystal May. Nope, going for a Rubik. I, I can't believe, I just cannot believe. Smack me, I don't know. Kick me in the ass. How the hell could I forget about Rubik? Still Pearl Strike, still Doom, still Ravage, no problem for Rubik, man, no problem. Well, it's not as easy, of course, as I make it sound, but Rubik, a pretty nice pick. Some uh, increased magic resistance from the Null Field as well, coming off from Rubik. Solid stun with the Telekinesis. Not the best, but not the worst either. And against melee heroes, the Telekinesis, once it ends or once you throw somebody down, uh, it, it will just mean that they might stun the others as well. So, I guess melee here is definitely not bad. Fate Bolt, decent ish nuke. So, ABC, they have a pretty well rounded lineup to be honest. Uh, if they have to rely too much on their physical damage, though, Faces Void is gonna have to go to, like super hard carry. Which he will most likely be in the safe lane. So, depending on how well he gets the farm early on, might just transition or go into that uh, semi fast hand of Midas or something like that. Oh, wrong button. Still getting used to the new hotkeys, but guys, we are here, we have loaded into the game. The draft is already over, and to introduce the lineups to you guys as well, for the side of Arcanis, Bok will be on the Tidehunter heading towards the offlane, leaving Heinrich on the Dragon Knight, Boombax to play the Sand King, and the last two will be Fright Butterflies on the Vengeful, and Mighty Savior Abby on the Doombringer. But, for the counterpart, for ABC, Apple banana cucumber on the dire side link will be playing the rubik leaving faces void to be wtf with winter in the mid lane role on the timber so and safe lane sharky on the sky Raph and multiplayer on the center i've got no clue who this guy is but we'll see how well he can perform and looks like it's it might be just dual lanes all around sand king though he's he's definitely not gonna stay in the mid lane i mean double melee just not gonna work out especially not against timber so so he's just scouting things out, checking whether ABC wants to come in and place down a ward or not. He doesn't have any sentries though, so I'm not too sure how big of a difference it would make. Maybe he's just gonna back up the Tide Hunter to make sure he gets the rune without any contention or something. Yes. WTF together with Link. How much are they gonna get out of this? I think even a pretty decent amount. I mean, Faces Void. Decently tanky with four base armor, has his tower shield as well. Venture spirits, right click, ain't that painful, of course. On top of that, you don't have the best range on Vengeful as well. So Rubik should be able to out harass them on the lane. Whereas Tombringer is almost completely useless as well early. 
He might go for just the Orb of Venom early on or depending on what creep he can get from the jungle might make a little difference as well. ABC chose not to just block out any big camps or anything. Maybe they were expecting some other lanes, maybe not. I guess it was rather obvious for Arcanis how they're going to lane this. There is a Hellbird Smasher. Not the best thing to get, but at least he has 15 store. And Link is going to get stunned already. Boombacks. He has boots. Rubik does as well. He eats a tree. Should be able to escape here unless... Oh, no. The Telekinesis Perusher comes through. It's going to be first blood. The double damage on Rubik doesn't help at all. Fright Butterflies gets another magic missile off. Had somehow enough mana for the time walk. WTF. He gets the last right click. A long range one. But a right click nonetheless. Perusher is ready once again. Boombacks. He got, got the clarity on himself. He's going to get the Perusher. A few more right clicks. No time walk. It's going to be a two for one. And, just a second guys, gonna increase game volumes a little bit. Okay, should be fine now. Oh, god damn. So, two for one. Excellent start for our canister, getting the two kills like that. And the most crucial part was the tanking. He had his clarity running for long enough for him to get that secondary pero strike. He got like seven mana in addition even, so that's just like, ah, oh, I didn't need that mana anyway. I'm a boss. Now, he's completely out of mana though. Which is a little bit of a shame, but he's gonna stack before just going back to home. And he's already level 2 as well, only needs that one extra level to start farming up the jungle just extremely fast, getting the extra levels, extra farm. And in the meantime, Tidehunter, offlane, 3 and 0. Uh, actually, 3 and 1 on Doombringer as well, so Doombringer not farming that well, but was a part of 2 kills, so it's perfectly fine, I think. Yeah, he even got the first plot as well, so even better for him. As Rubik gonna pick up yet another rune, bounty rune this time around. Heinrich bottled up an illusion as well. Winter doesn't have his bottle yet. As I say that, it's gonna come out to him. So everybody has the bottle. 11, 12 and 1 though. Against 6 and 0. Dragon Knight. He's just getting his ass handed to him so far, man. Winter is already doubling his last hits. And it's only 2 minutes in. So he's just doing, doing extremely well so far. As to be expected, Whirling Death. Just so good against any kind of melee hero. But strength melees most of all. Uh, WTF did finish up the poor man shield, so more or less vengeful spirits, strike clicks aren't gonna do all that much. But is Mighty Savior going for a hand of Midas, for example? Is he going for that greedy doom build? If you're safe lane farming and you have enough farm, which at the moment he's missing quite a lot of last days. I mean, comparing 15 and 3 on Winter with a 6 and 3 Doombringer. Top lane though, multiplayer might be in trouble, Boombax. Just sandstorm away, no re revelation. Oh, Hoofstop catches Puck. He's just gonna go down. Anchor smash, not gonna be enough in any way. Multiplayer, double edge. Oh, he, he cut it close for himself. But they get the kill in the end. Boombax just wasn't able to assist enough. Got the burrow strike, but Centaur got the chooks after that. Up against two support heroes was just a little bit too much for them to handle. Puck still level three and a half, not doing that bad. Faces Void completely left solo as well now, of course. But he's level 4 and a half already, so doing slightly better than the Tidehunter. Lasted twice, doing a lot better. 12 and 5 compared to a 3 and 0. So Arcanis, do they just want to keep on stacking and trying to farm up? Yes, Helga, will do. Will do. I set it on 2 minutes on hitbox, but I guess hitbox delay of 2 minutes is actually 1 and a half. So, that, that's something nice to know as well about Hitbox. As WTF, level 5 already. He, he's out leveling the Doombringer, of course. He hasn't been boxed out, but that might happen now. He time walks forward, but there's no stun anymore. Dragon Tail comes out, minus armor as well. Magic Missile to follow. They need a, more, a little bit more body blocking. Breed Fire, a few more right clicks, backtracks. Are they going to be enough? Are you kidding me? Healing Cell as well. Uphill miss from Fight Butterflies. No way in hell. And he's going to get the time walk away now. This uphill miss. Didn't cancel the healing cell, and with the healing cell ticking for a couple extra seconds, I think that was what just made him escape there. Oh god. Wow, well, Bok, gonna get slowed down, silenced up as well, but no stuns to get him at least, not yet. Link didn't go for the telekinesis, I don't know exactly why, but he was holding on to it. So, Heinrich. Yes, he is bottle crowing as well, yes he is. Is he going for power threads first or maybe going for drums even? Some Dragon Knights just go for early bracers. May might not even finish drums, just get the bracers for value early. Uh, Smighty Savior. I thought like, wow, he went so aggressive. I thought like maybe he has Doom. Nope, not level 6 yet, unfortunately for him. 
With the Doom, he can potentially go for solo kills, having the Orb of Venom and the face boost as well. So he hits reasonably hard. Oh man, but WTF. First hit bash. Not like he can go for a kill. If he gets level 6 though, he can get a counter kill as well. If he gets the Chronosphere onto the Doombringer, if he's like down to half HP and hasn't activated Scorch Earth yet, might just be an easy kill. And Heinrich is about to hit level 6, so Winter already is 6 though. Chakram comes through Heinrich, already taking a lot of damage from that. I mean, Whirling Death plus Chakram. It's crazy how much damage he can do. And Timbersaw, is he going to start roaming around now with the Ancient Seal combination? I mean, Timbersaw and Sky of Mage should be able to blow up everybody even without this Sky of Mage ultimate, the basic player. Uh, so far, nothing much is really happening, although, as I said, that Bok might be in some trouble. Winter comes in with a haste rune. If they can get the telekinesis, Chakram to slow him down. Hoof top does actually connect. Telekinesis to follow. And Centaur gets the kill with an easy double edge. Only level 2, but plenty of damage with the whirling death helping out. So Winter gets a nice rune, goes for the first rotation, and just epic success for him. Really the best rune to get in that situation. Without that, maybe Invis would have been just fine as well, but... It would have been way slower and might not have guaranteed a kill like this. Heinrich though pops the Elder Dragon for might. I guess he wants to pressure the tier 1. I'm not too sure if it was worth it. I mean, just look at this Chakram. Suddenly you're, you have like one creep and what, what are you going to do with the Elder Dragon form now? I don't know. He's just taking out the damage from the creeps, from the tower as well. It's not worth getting that one right click on the tower really. I think. Uh, yeah, so, so. Questionable, questionable, let's say it like that. WTF though, has the Chronosphere, as does Mighty Savior have the Doom. They need to soften up the heroes a little bit before they go for their ultimates though. Doom, what creep does he have? Well, with the Thunderclap also connecting, he might get the kill. But with the Thunderclap and the Doom, he suddenly won't have enough mana for his Scorch Dwarf anymore. So, that's the biggest issue of a Doombringer, especially if we go for face boots. He's going for drums at least, so some extra intelligence coming out from there. Has the Robe of Magi already. Something is flying out. Bracers. So yeah. Drum is going to be finished rather soon. About 400 gold away from that. And Okay guys. I'm just going to reduce the bitrate. Because there aren't proper quality options. For some reason. We should have it because we're a partner. But I guess not yet. We're going to have to check, out, check it out. So I'm going to just change the settings a little bit guys. Sorry. Oh, got them checking the game and ch checking settings for a little while is somewhat hard. Okay, almost done, almost done, guys. Don't worry. So, I've lowered it. I'm gonna have to restart stream, but before that, I'm gonna have to do yet another thing. So that is exactly why we are streaming on Hitbox Set. I want to just test things out to see how well something works and what does not work and what not, so on and so forth. SWTF wants to go into something, maybe get a kill in the offlane or something like that. I mean, he has the Chronosphere. And, oh, that's it now. Winter is coming in together with Link. Should be an easy kill if they just get Chronosphere on really any target. No matter how tanky, they should be able to get a kill with the three of them. Unless they just position themselves so badly that the Chronosphere... Makes it so that ABC can follow up with their own supports. But Winter and Link, still smoke hasn't broken. And they're, they're not going to find anything, not yet, but oh, Fright Butterflies run! Stampede comes out, Chakram connects as well, time walk through. They pop the Chrono TP, is he going to be in the Chrono? Yes, it is, Pock. He has enough mana for the ultimate, but... Oh, Magic Wand, he pops the ultimate anyway, they want to go for double TF. The Burrow Strike is there with Boom Bax, the Splink Tiger. He got it pretty early on to Venice, just farming up the jungle quite a lot. They won't get the follow-up on anybody, I think. They have the Doom if they really want to go. But a Vengeful Spirit for a Faceless Void. I take it any day. Of course, they used an ultimate, but they're going to get Link as well. There's the Dragon Tail to follow up. Make sure Ruby can't do anything defensively. And Sharky, doomed up. Going to get chased down. Maybe denied. Nope. Mighty Savior Ravi. Right clicks were enough. So that's not going to be only three kills for them. Also a tier one. Excellent. Excellent fight for Arcanis. As after this now, I'm gonna go for a stream restart. I'm gonna have to change one more thing, guys. One more thing. I'm gonna have to increase the delay a little bit. Oh, God. So, I guess I'm gonna have to add a little bit of OBS delay. So, guys, stream is gonna go offline for 30-something seconds. Really sorry for that, but... Tournament rules, man.
Ah, oh, I was muted now. Holy crap, guys. So sorry. As the Berserk comes out. There's the Ravage as well. Oh, multiplayer is going to lose his life. Magic Missile up. Another three heroes down. Goddamn stream restarts. Screwed up my microphone. So sorry, guys, for those small issues here. But solo casting and changing settings and whatnot. Not the best. Not the best at all. So I am terribly sorry for a minute or two worth of silence. Hopefully I'm going to make it up to you. Papayam. They get the tier 1 as well. They're just always getting fights. And the tier 1 somehow after that as well. Although they don't have the craziest amount of push. Okay. So hopefully all the stream issues and everything will be fixed now. God damn, keeping an eye on everything solo is is a little bit devastating. If you ever streamed yourself solo, you would understand. If you have like at least one guy to fill up the silence for a little bit, you can just check keep an eye on everything. But it is cool. Everything's cool. Blink Taker was picked up by Doombringer. Bok will have his own Blink Taker as well in about 150 gold on the Tide Hunter. Definitely gonna be a crucial pickup for them. So with the double or triple Blink Taker they're gonna have at that time. They can just go for so much. I mean, other than the Blink Taggers though, it's not like they have too much farm, too many items on them. But neither does ABC. Shadow Blade though, picked up straight off the bat from, for Dragon Knight. So that's gonna be a nice item. 3k worth of items. Didn't go for the BKB straight off. Didn't feel he needs it. He's pretty damn tanky as it is. Scar of Mage. Haven't seen huge Mystic Flares. Chronospheres really haven't been used in conjunction with the others as well. And... Morbid Mask. For Faces Void, which means Mask of Madness in the making winter. I still would have expected this Timber Saw to have a little bit more impact. Being in the mid lane and all, but he's still level 9. Hasn't been a part of too many kills, just 1-1-1 one, one, and one for him, the KDA. I mean, looking at the level chart overall, Doombringer, Dragonite, level 11. So I guess nobody's doing that great. And now Timber Saw gets level 10 as well. But usually you would want to have a little bit more, maybe. More points into reactive armor, make you just that much tankier. Heinrich, though, he's on the hunt with the Shadow Blade. Can you get it? Come on, go for it. Man, man mode or don't man mode. You're up against so many heroes. He wants to go for faces by Boomback. Squad come in as well with the Burrow Strike. But they're going into Chakram, into Mystic Flare. Oh, the Froze. No, such a bad engagement. Faces Void, of course, did drop pretty damn low with only one point into backtrack. But that fight, 2.6k XP. About a 2.4k net worth swing as well, gold swing. That, that's ridiculous. I mean, if you're ahead and you lose a couple of heroes, suddenly the enemy team gets so much back. So that was almost the first time in this game that Arcanis kind of failed with what they did or what they went for. A little bit unfortunate, of course, but hey, that's the sad truth of it. They wanted to go for some big plays, just get an easy kill, which might have happened, but little did they know that all, literally all of the ABC heroes were around there. We're just gonna defend a little bit, but Tombringer is still farming like a madman, as is to be expected with just having the Devour. Even without the Hand of Midas, you get a crazy amount of farm unless you start dying and just all the time. And... Hopefully guys, stream is properly working for you now, or for all of you that is, that it doesn't lag anymore. I, I can't put it lower because then it's just gonna be awful, it's not gonna be 720p even anymore, bitrate wise. But ho hopefully it's just a little bit better for you than it was previously. Oh, tasty water. Thank god for this pause. Of course, thank not thank god that they had to disconnect. Even two players are, are disconnected. Hopefully they're going to be back soon enough. Maybe it's like computer crashing. I have no idea. But probably not going to take more than a couple of minutes time. Or at least I have my fingers crossed that it wouldn't. In the meantime, I can start uploading the first part of the vote. Unless it's corrupted. Because, well, OBS crashed as I tried to restart the stream. Got some buffer overflows. I don't know. Something, something. And, well, they're already reconnected, guys. That that was way faster than expected, to be honest. Especially uh, for the Philippine standards. I'm not saying that they say th saying anything bad about them, but... Well, unfortunately, that's, that's just how things happen, usually. Oh, I know exactly why. 
I know exactly why my OBS crashed because I didn't stop recording. Oh, Boomax gonna get Chronosphere up, Sky of Mage, ultimate to follow. Boomax still alive though. Does go down to the last arcane ball. Didn't get the burst strike. If he had gotten the burst strike, WTF would have been so dead. Burst strike stolen from Link though. Nice swap from Fright Butterflies. Magic missile to follow. No. He, he went a little bit too late with it. And now multiplayer gonna get the turn around. Another two kills going in the favor of Arcanis. But Doombringer's ultimate was able to take down the Fences Void. Nobody was sticking around with him to deny him. But still, once again, an exchange favoring ABC and Arcanis. It's not like they've lost their lead yet just because, well, they're still farming up. A little bit better than ABC. But they are losing more than they need be. Really with the item uh, advantage that they had. With all the blink daggers that they had. They should have been able to just clear this up. A lot cleaner than they did at the moment. And Heinrich, another Shadow Blade. Wants to chase down Ling. Now Ling just started backing off at the right time. So all is good for them. But yeah. What I want to say is that I know exactly. Exactly why. Uh, OBS crashed probably because you don't have to stop your local recording even though you're stopping and restarting the stream but since I changed stream settings uh, it would have meant that the recording would have or usually when you start the stream it wants to start recording immediately and when it's with different settings that's why probably the frame rates and everything and the resolution didn't ma mix and match with it so yeah it probably cannot record a different resolution than you're streaming at. Something like that, I think. In any case, all is fine. A tier 2 will fall in the favor of ABC because... Or not in the favor of Arcanist, that is, as ABC make no moves at all to defend this. In the meantime, they're going to get a tier 1 of their own. And look at this, 4 range creeps and a siege creep. What is this? How did you get 4 range creeps here? This, this must be cheating, I mean. 4 melees, but there should be like 1 range creep, maximum 2. ABC, confirmed cheating. But high ground push already going on Heinrich with that level 2 Elder Dragon form. Going balls deep. And Heinrich. Arcane bolted up. Tower ch still chasing him. And WTF gonna go in Chronosphere only onto one. Swap out as well. Heinrich, he runs back to the Chronosphere. Don't know exactly why. Ravage of course already popped as well. Did stop the engage from ABC for a little while. Mighty Saver. He's pretty damn tanky. Gets the Doom onto Winter Final Link. He stole the swap. Used it onto Doombringer, but instead tied himself WTF. He bought back, came back in, wants to get Doombringer, might be able to do so. Probably will as well, unless Boombax. Oh, the epicenter, but there's no Burrow Strike yet. Burrow Strike, come on, Boombax. Waiting for it. There's the Burrow Strike, but it's not enough. Backtracks come through from WTF. Anchor Smash. Gonna miss. As Doombringer still alive somehow. Blink away, level death onto multiplayer. They're, oh, they're gonna go for the center of War on Arkash Top. Slow down. Can they get the Burrow Strike? Oh, sure they can. Wave of Terror comes through, and it's gonna be enough to get the kill. There was only one buyback, the face is void. But all in all, look at this. Four for one. One Vengeful Spirit. Only death there. Only freaking death. A measly Vengeful Spirit support. And they even bought back on the face is void. Just horrible, horrible fight. If you're ABC now. And Arcanis, of course, they must be feeling happy about how it's going for them. Seven and a half thousand net worth lead once again. XP nearing that 4k mark as well. Didn't get Drax though, but. Tier 3, down to less than half HP. I'd consider it a win any day, any time. Maybe even go for Roshan next. Don't think they have any minus armor apart from the Gush. Oh, never mind. Whoa, what am I saying? They have Wave of Terror. Stupid me. I was like, yeah, you don't have Medallion of Courage. Blah, blah, blah. But they have a Vengeful. Oh, God. Oh, God. So they could easily go for Roshan next and then go high ground. They have a double damage on Dragon Knight as well. I fear for the next fight. Of course, Ravage won't be up for another 50 seconds. Whereas ABC, they will have the Chronosphere in 6. They want to get the tier 1, the last remaining tier 1 tower on the map. As 4 staff picked up on Tidehunter as well. Blink 4 staff, just additional mobility. Winter up to 9 plus on charges, so not doing that bad, I guess. But not the best either as Boombax. Look at him, no epicenter, but he is ready as ever to just initiate. If they're waiting for too long ABC that is, they might even just wait for the Tide Hunter to have Ravage. Everybody's steeping in. Fock just ran himself in. Fried Butterflies there, Heinrich. Shadow Blade, Pop Jailer Dragon for Stun onto the center as well. There's the guys. Epicenter comes through with the Burrow Strike multiplayer still alive. Will he go down? No, what? Are you kidding me? One right click, that's all you need. They don't get it, but the Breed Fire does finally clean him up. Link stole the Sandstorm, but he got just splashed down from Heinrich's Dragon Knight. Four heroes down for one. Once again, Winter. Oh no, the stun. 
Gets him after he gets the chain away, but he goes down for the breathe fire anyway. Heinrich, triple kill for him, mega kill streak. And that initiation with the Shadow Blade, the epicenter to follow up. I mean, Arcanis, their teamwork is spot on today. Really excellent plays all around. Can't say anything bad about this. Re really nothing bad can be said. And Aghanim Scepter finished on Doom as well. He has the Doom, didn't even need to use it in that fight. Bok, just going for zoning duties. And this is gonna be Rax. It should be. They should be able to disengage rather easily as well. If they don't though. Oh, look at this Blink. Hoofed on bot to Heinrich. Rather tank hero. Blink ravage from Bok. Catches at least three. Winter stays out of it. Wants to go in. Chakra. Oh, look at the AoE damage. He got the Whirling Death onto three with the chain to follow up. They're gonna get Pride Butterflies, but it's one support. Not that bad at all for Arcanis, and they've backed off. They got, well, the melee racks, but range racks. Not gonna stand for too long, as another Chakram catches too. There's the Perosak, like a little bit too late, the Whirling Death got the kills. Double kill for Winter, they're cleaning them up. Arcanis, why the hell did you stick around? Two mega kill streaks ended with one blow, and Boombax silenced up. Oh, gets the Perosak like before the hoof stomp, or rather before the double edge of Centaur. Still, he's not in the clear yet. Four step forward from Centaur, maybe Boombax. His own blink terror, but he's in the Observer Ward vision. Oh man. Four staff, hoof stomp, nope. He got his own four staff to get away. What the hell is this game, guys? Guys, why the hell did they stick around? Why the hell did Doom and Dragon Knight not back off there? I got no idea. Sandstorm activated for nothing. Now Boombax blinks away. A little bit of questionable, but. Yes, he's epicenter already once again. That's how long this has lasted now. So, 10k Network Fleet still, even though they give away two Mega Kill Streaks and holy crap! Yeah, that just happened, guys. That Sand King just stopped existing all of a sudden. His existence was void. <laughs> God, Timber Sauce burst damage is real if you can connect it on to just one hero. Especially if it's on a strength hero and Sharky, gonna be caught by Bok. Might be able to outrun him four step forward, silenced up as well. Come on, Buck, you can do it! Blink! One more right click. Yeah, it's gonna be enough. In the bottom lane, though, they're gonna get the stun onto Mighty Savior Rabbi, and they're gonna get the kill. When three heroes come onto you like that, there's no chance, and ABC, they're fighting back. They're gonna get the tier one here as well. Maybe even push a little bit forward, although, speaking of pushing forward, Arcanis, they're doing the same. Buck, gonna push the top tier two. Whereas mid tier two, Dragon Knight, together with Eventual, are gonna try to go for that. But now Timber Saw. He has a BKB as well, and suddenly not too much to be afraid of. Well, I guess everything apart from the Doom, of course. Doom is still gonna be just an excellent ability for him to use. Yes, Chakram comes through. Heinrich activates the Elder Dragon form, not level 3 yet, unfortunately. He's only half a level away from getting 16, but it's gonna be Tower. Or is it? The Glyph comes out, so it might get denied, Heinrich. Tank. T tanked up the tower for a little bit too long, and yeah, tower denied by Winter. Easy right click. But I don't think Arcanis mind all that much. Looking at the graphs though, whoa, whoa, look at it. About a 4k, maybe even almost 5k swing in net worth. XP more or less the same, 5 to 6k even. But the tier 2 tower did go down in the top lane as well. So even though this one got denied, they got another tier 2, and this means all the outer towers are gone. And Arcanis, next mission, it must be. Just break high ground or low. Elder Dragon form expiring. Not the best time to go for it. Maybe try to go for Snow uh, Roche. Sneak it. Of course, going for Roche against Faceless Void. Even a Team Persona Center might be a little bit risky. But without Elder Dragon form, there's no way you should or probably will be able to push high ground. And looks like Mighty Savior Abby also working towards the BKB of his own now. Oh, yeah, probably. On the Doombringer. It's kind of a must against Timber Saw, I mean, plus not only that, they have a Sky of Mage and the Centaur as well. ABC Timber Saw, they're, it's their highest farmer, but look at the Faceless Void. WTF, he has less farm than the Sand King, and that, that's the thing that's hurting them most. Once the PKB start coming out from Arcanis, what are ABC actually gonna do if Arcanis want to come and Death Ball? Oh, the Doom to stop Winter's TP out, just at the last millisecond almost. He's gonna get chased down, or is he Stampede? Is there, they need to swap anything at all. Mighty Saver is gonna have his blink in two seconds. Level diff to slow him down. Doesn't get the multiplier. And are they gonna continue? You have the blink. Come on, blink. Right click. Pock, never mind. Blink. Four staff. Gosh. Oh, kill secured. He completely took it away. He took it away. 
Of course, Toonbringer with the Aghanim Scepter. There was no way that Timberstock can escape. At least it's going to respawn in 10 seconds only. Heinrich, not stunned yet. Has the Elder again for him. He's going to pop it as well. It's level 3 stun onto the center. PKB activated. Is he going to turn it around? Pearl Strike onto WTF. He's silenced up in return. Now, boom, backs to this. Going to get Telekinesis up, but the Ravage catches 2 Oh, Almost caught WTF as well, but not quite. Supports are down. Stun onto WTF. Well, suddenly, that hero is no longer. Pack Leader's Aura. Vengeance Aura. Just look at the extra damage. Come on, Doom Bringer, come back. Pack Leader's Aura. Come, come. Yes! Success! 250 damage, or close enough to it. 240. So this is gonna be probably another set of racks. Blink, Pearl Strike onto Winter. Will the Dragon Tail follow? He gets this PKB off before though. So he's gonna stay alive, Heinrich. He's gonna lose his life. That was a slight mistake. I don't know if his stun was on cooldown or if... What? But... He waited just a little bit too long with the Dragon Tail to follow up. Should have been just plenty of stun to get the kill on him. So they're not gonna lose the racks. Blink with the Stampede. They get Fried Butterflies as well. Boombacks misses with the Pearl Strike. And they don't get the racks. Or do they? Mighty Savior up. He still wants to keep on going. He's picked up a Void Stone, so I guess no BKB. Winter, oh, stunned up, went for the Chakram. Didn't connect though, multiplayer does connect with the Blink, hoofed up double H. Si silenced up as well on Boombacks now. He gets the Blink, oh no, please no, say they ain't so WTF. Whiffs with the Chrono. Boombacks still not in the clear, but Sandstorm, he has the Burrow Strike into Blink. Oh, that was so unfortunate. God damn, this Chrono now. It's gonna be on cooldown. Whereas Pock, a refresher or picked up on the Tide Hunter. Double Ravage. And they only want to have BKB. Oh, never mind. Correct that. Multiplayer just picked up his own as well. So they have two BKBs now to work with. But even so, even so, it's it's most likely not gonna be enough. There's just not enough damage output coming out from ABC apart from just the magical damage. But Winter. I mean, there's always going to be the Doom threat coming out from Mighty Savior and with the Void Stone. Is it really a refresher or for himself as well, or is it just Hex? I oh, Yule Scepter. Okay then. An item you don't see all that often on Doombringers, but it, it might work. That's yes, multiplayer. Gets himself the Taste Rune. Still, Arcanis. If they don't win this game... I think some small. Oh, whoa, 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 boombacks. He blinked here. And Pearl Strike here. Value Pearl Strikes. He has plenty of mana to work around with. Oh, Elder Dragon form already activated. Oh, he's just gonna splash down the creep wave. Look at that damage. Absolutely mammoth damage coming out. And Mjolnir. Mjolnir. Yeah, they're gonna go on the melee racks now, Winter. Do they have enough? Do they have the Chronosphere up? Blink, Ravage, catches at least two, Refresher Orb comes out. There's the Ravage, catches free. Actually, the first one caught free as well, I think. Burrow Strike onto the center. None of them have buyback. Excellent initiation. WTF, gonna escape from Heinrich. He himself did not have quite enough to bring down the faces for it, but... Three heroes down, Doom on Winter. He had to escape as well. They don't care. They're just zoning everybody out. They got the free kills they needed. Zoned out another one. And gonna get... The second set of racks now. So two racks ahead. Are they gonna go for third as well? They might attempt it even without the Elder Dragon form. Might be a little bit too risky. I mean, you're not having the Ravage and whatnot. Well, I guess they feel confident enough as... Well, it, maybe rightfully so. Tidehunter blinks forward, just looking for anybody who could hide himself. But Pearl Strike onto Winter. Will the follow-up be there? There's the Crossfire onto two. Come on, can they get the kill on Doombringer? Mighty Savior, Abby! Oh, the swap in time! He gets the use up as well. But, Vengeance Spirit would just give away his own life. But Heinrich, even without the Elder Dragon form, he does so much damage. There's the epicenter coming through. They get Ling. WTF got the time walk away somehow. Heinrich lacked a little bit of mana for the Dragon Tail. But his right clicks on the Dragon Knight. Just getting the lightning procs from the Mjolnir. Did quite a lot of center in the meantime. Chased down the Doombringer, got the kill with a double edge. But still tier 3 down, no racks. Oh, Winter, come on! He wants the revenge kill! Stampede comes out as well. They're gonna get Heinrich or are they? Perro Strike, he's still alive. Not enough mana for a Shadow Blade though. Magic 1, 4 seconds time. He needs to survive somehow. The Chakram does not connect. Timber Chain does go through and he has Shadow Blade. He's safe, no detection. But Pock might not be that safe. Timber Chain through, Chakram didn't connect. 4 step down. Oh no! The force staff wasn't a success. He still gets the blink out. Are you kidding me? The force staffs, the blinks, the jukes. Them jukes. Multiplayer still wants to give chase to boombacks. Oh no, he goes the wrong direction. Oh, he's gonna run back into it. Oh no, he's not. Fried butterflies. 
I don't BKB from multiplayer forced out Sandstorm. He can't go for the kill. Nice attempt, nonetheless. But it, this this most certainly feels like it's almost game already. It's not quite this black and white, of course. I mean, you, you still have a Chronosphere, but... You're just not getting any more damage, almost. I mean, Arcanist, they were fighting in your base for like a couple of minutes and still you were unable to really fight properly. And Heinrich going for an AC now by the looks of it. What's on the Jikun? Nothing yet. So just has the blade mail. Not all that close to the AC yet. Gem finally picked up on ABC as well. Centaur to carry it for them. But Centaur, tanky as he may be, he doesn't actually have any strength items. I mean, there's a little bit, little bit coming in from the BKB, but... Against what Arcanis have, they have the double Ravage ready in 8 seconds. Epicenter in 1. Finally, Agony Scepter is there on Winter. But is it gonna matter this late? I mean, two lanes will always be pushing in. Chakram, double Chakram, definitely goes. Oh, the Blink Force, the Ravage catches free again. Second Ravage, where is, it? where is that Link? He runs into it, he stole it, but he can't get to use it. Winter, tombed up as well. Three heroes down already. Boombacks, gonna get the stun onto Sharky. Make it four heroes down, and well, where's the last one? Running the hell away. Centaur, more or less the tankiest hero in the lineup. Timber so might be a little bit tankier even at the moment. He just couldn't get into the fights, had to escape, and that's GG guys, Arcanist, they take game number one. So thank you so much for tuning in and helping me solve some technical issues and whatnot, or making the stream more uh, viewable, watchable for everybody. So I hope you enjoyed the cast, if you did, be sure to follow us as well on our social media, Hefla TV, on Facebook, as well as Twitter, quite easy to find. You should have the links below the stream here as well, as you did on Twitch. So, be sure to follow us. We're gonna stream some more on Hitbox in the near future as well. We're gonna have a tournament coming up here. So, we're gonna have to get, get set things set up as perfectly as we can for your viewing experience. But, it's only game number one. We're gonna have game number two coming up as well, where ABC x Chinese Revenge definitely want to have a revenge on Arcanis Gaming now. But, we'll see if they will be able to do so. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes time, guys. So, don't go anywhere.